Hi friend, and welcome to another Chat on Fire. Today, let's talk about taking that first leap into your financial future. How do you get started with your first $500 investing in the stock market? If you're new to my channel, I want to let you know that investing is so dumb and simple that it almost seems like there has to be more to it that we must be missing. You literally just put money into an account, don't touch it, don't even check it, and watch it grow for a few years or decades. You may be asking yourself, if it's so easy, why isn't everyone doing it? Well, it's easy and hard at the same time. One of my friends who goes by Marcel, a graduate of the Columbia Business School program, says that the answer to that question is that it takes three skills to start investing your first $500. And those skills are courage, wisdom, and patience. Notice I said skills and not traits, because these skills can be learned. It is within your control and you get to choose if this is something that is important for your financial future. And of the three, the most important one that most people lack is patience. That is where people generally fall off and fail when it comes to investing. Investing is like watching paint dry. It should be kind of boring. Though I will say that I personally get it excited every time an auto transfer happens to my investing accounts for my paychecks, and I get to buy more SCHB ETF. I don't get excited much when it goes up or down because that really isn't in my control. But I do get very excited every time another chunk of my income goes towards my potential growth in my stock accounts. So while the most important skill is patience, the basis is wisdom. It is hard to be courageous or patient if you don't understand enough about what is going on. And this is what this video is to help you explore. Courage without wisdom is recklessness. I don't want you to be reckless, so let's build wisdom. But I get it. Maybe you don't want to take that first step because you have been overwhelmed with so much information that you don't know who to believe and you still don't know what the first step is in regards to investing in the stock market. You hear about Bitcoin and GameStop and Tesla stock in the news or from your friends and how these are going up in value like crazy and how so-and-so made so much money. Who do you listen to? And the answer is, there truly is a lot of sketchy financial advice out there. Remember how I said investing is kind of boring if you're doing it right? Well, talking about Roth IRAs and employer 401ks and brokerage accounts, that's the right thing to do to sustainably build wealth. But that's not going to get as many clicks or views as someone who became a millionaire overnight by getting lucky on Dogecoin. Or someone who bought GameStop stock before it skyrocketed in January. Or someone buying Tesla stock in 2013. These are sensational pieces designed to grab clicks and views. I was on my Instagram Explore page and holy, there are a lot of slicked hair guys out there peddling all sorts of very interesting strategies or products. I don't blame you for being confused. So my advice to you would be to listen to someone that you trust. Ask your source these important questions. What are you trying to sell me? Who are you? What are your credentials? Is what you are telling me to do sustainable for the long haul of years or decades? Are your results replicable across time and different situations? So let me personally answer these questions for you. First, I'm making these videos as a passion project. I've seen too many people struggle with money in my day job as a doctor in East LA for the underserved. And I truly believe that wealth is health. I feel like as a physician, the medications I prescribe and treatment plans that we jointly come up with can only do so much if people don't have the resources that they need. Education and employment are going to be key factors in improving lives. What I want to do is to guide people into being wealth creators by becoming more financially literate. I'm not selling any products to you. I don't want anyone to fail and my reputation as a physician is on the line. This YouTube channel is a hobby and if you look at my view and subscriber account and lack of sponsorships, clearly I'm not making money off of this. I make plenty of my day job as a doctor and that tides me over pretty well. It allows me the freedom of time to study more about finance and to create these videos for you to benefit. My mom works as a clerk and before that she worked in a garment factory and my dad did construction. My medical degree was not handed to me. My financial literacy was not given to me. It took an insane amount of work and putting the right opportunities in front of me for me to get to where I am today. And I want success for you because I truly believe there is room for everyone at the top. Society does not need people to be poor. A successful society gets everyone lifted to their full potential. No one is going to teach you a lot of the stuff I want you to learn about financial literacy 
because someone's always trying to sell you something. For example, spending time on Instagram, you always feel like you need to keep with, up with the Joneses, whether it is seeing your friends on fancy vacations or people with nice cars or houses. Your employer wants you to work forever. So you living pay paycheck to paycheck is good for your employer. They are not going to teach you about finances. Credit card companies want you to pay the minimum payment that you can afford so that they can collect insane amounts of interest off of you. Everywhere you go, places want you to finance something, whether that is a mattress or a couch or clothes or handbags or cars on bad credit. And then someone else is out there trying to sell you some useless universal life insurance policies. It's going to be tough to get ahead when you have all these influences trying to get you into debt or pushing you to make sketchy decisions. I'll tell you a secret you probably already know. You don't get rich by looking rich. When I die, I want to be happy knowing that I made a difference in the world by helping people create wealth and achieve their fullest potential. That is my reward for making these videos. If I make it big on YouTube one day, that's great. I would love that. I do aspire to that, but I'm also realistic. There's a YouTuber named Marquez Brownlee, and he said that YouTube's like basketball. Anyone can play. Rarely anyone will, will make any money playing. For now, I just want to play, so I appreciate you for letting me on your court. So, how does a freaking doctor know so much about finance? Well, to be honest, I learned mostly by listening to other financial independence experts and then just investing myself ever since I started making a little bit of money as a resident physician. You see, the financial independence movement is massive amongst healthcare workers. Generally, doctors don't like too much risk. We want to sustainably grow our wealth. A lot of my colleagues also don't want to work forever. We want to spend time with our families. We have aspirations of travel and doing other things we love, just like you. And through learning through reliable sources, other financial independence enthusiasts, for example, it actually doesn't take that much time to learn the right moves to get us to our financial goals. So back to the first step. The first step of anything is absolutely the hardest. It may seem overwhelming, but you just have to break it down step by step. So what is that one simple step that you should do when you start investing? So listen closely. I was chatting with my Columbia MBA investment firm friend, Marcel, the other day, someone who studied investing as a career. And he said, for most people, all we need, literally need to do is put money into the S&P 500, which is a set of 500 of some of the biggest companies in the United States. We set it and forget it for years. No fancy financial advisor needed. You can do this specifically by going into your employer's 401k or 403b or 457 plan, whatever they offer, and set at least a 4% contribution or however much it takes to get the company match. And you put that into large cap equities. Large cap means big companies. Equities mean stocks. Then you make sure you pay off any credit card debt or car loans or personal loans where you have more than a 5% interest rate. Again, it's hard to grow money when you have this parasite gnawing at you from the inside. Why 5%? Because when you pay down these loans, you have a guaranteed rate of return on the investment on whatever that interest rate is. When you invest in the stock market, you're not guaranteed that 5%, at least in the short term. Next, remember to open the Roth IRA. If you haven't done this already, remember this is one of the greatest wealth building tools that is allowed by the government. How insane? All right, if you contribute $500 every month, or $250 per bi-weekly paycheck from age 20 to age 65 at a 9% uh, rate of return, you will end up with $3 million tax-free. In the 45 years, you would have contributed $270,000 in cash, but the growth by buying an exchange-traded fund or ETF like SCHB or VOO, which represents the S&P 500, that'll get you to $3 million. And if you're 30 years old and you're contributing $500 a month to the Roth by age 65, you'll have $1.3 million tax-free. If you're 40 years old, $500 a month until age 65, you'll get over half a million dollars. Like I said, anybody can do it. Ask yourself if you choose to. Perhaps the one thing that's still holding you back from investing in the stock market is that you feel like it's like gambling or is that only for rich people or that when you make money, you're feeling like you're taking money from someone else. I've already debunked one myth and that is that it is hard to open an account. In case you need reminding, just Google it or YouTube it on someone else's video. Open a Roth IRA at schwab.com. And once you have money in there, use the money to buy VTI, which is the total stock market index fund. 
and it includes thousands of companies. So next, let's debunk the next myth that the stock market is like gambling. When you are investing in the stock market, you're giving money for companies to grow, to hire talent, to provide jobs of workers, for research and development, to make products that will make people's lives easy, easier. You are creating wealth for more than just yourself. You're providing opportunities for other people. When you gamble, the money merely exchanges hands based on winners or losers. And all the casino games have a house advantage where over time, the house is gonna win. It's totally different when you're investing in the stock market. So how can wealth continually be created? Some people call it growing the pie. When the pie grows, everyone gets a bigger slice. Think about this. How do you make money at your job? Either you get more efficient and produce better quality products with the same amount of time, or you work more hours, right? So if you are investing, you're allowing companies to hire more people, in turn increasing the total number of hours worked. Companies can hire better talent that can do more complex jobs, and that will motivate people to become more educated to get these better paying jobs. More educated people means more money is earned. That means more money can be spent in other sectors of the economy. Better talent means more innovative products, which in turn generates more income. Or the money you are giving to the companies by investing is used to buy the tools they need to make the production process more efficient. Savings that can be passed on to the consumer, making things cheaper, better, faster over time. Think about big screen TVs or laptop computers from the 90s until now. When things get cheaper, each person's effective income increases and everyone gets richer. Everyone benefits. No one needs to be taking advantage of anyone or taking money from anyone for wealth to be created through investing. This allows for the stock market to keep going up steadily over time, allowing for sustainability and replication of results. Now, let's talk about stock market investing being only for rich people. Well, about 56% of the United States actually own stocks, according to the Gallup poll in 2021. So more people own stocks than not. It's true. Rich people own much more stock because they have more income and capital. But to get started, taking that first leap, you don't have to start off rich. However, I do want you to end up financially healthy. So I want to end on this. You only have to be right a few times in life on the big stuff that truly matters. And you can be wrong on a lot of little stuff and end up okay. Don't sweat every single small decision to try to optimize every last detail. Otherwise, it'll be hard to get anything done. If you have wondered about investing, start small. Get your feet wet. When we all try something new, we may get some scratches and bruises. It's part of the learning. You don't have to do anything too crazy when you're still learning, but just dip in a little bit. And don't get too caught up on all the tiny details either. You have to just learn enough to get started. Think about this. You don't have to know all about how to write code or build computer hardware to use an iPhone. You don't have to know the details of infrared waves to use a remote control to change a channel on your TV. You don't need to understand the cycles of the combustion engine to drive a car. Learn enough of what you need to know and then use the tool. And that's all for today, my friends. Feel free to subscribe if you want to learn more. Share this video with a friend if you liked today's episode. Happy investing and let's get financially savvy together.